Ink Ribbon. There are two things I love. Video games and color theory. The two usually go hand in hand with a ton of video games dripping with amazing color that can not only evoke emotion but also communicate things to the player effectively. But we're not talking about those games today. Instead, today we're talking about when gaming went through the brown phase. So around the mid 2000s is when the new console generation was being introduced and I started noticing that some games were really lacking in color. And then suddenly, every game I wanted to play was being covered in these muddy brown textures and sometimes even brown filters over the entire scene. It was inescapable. Prince of Persia, Amnesia, God of War, Silent Hill, Tomb Raider, Grand Theft Auto 4, Rule of Rose, Resistance, Dead Space. They were all brown. Now, I tried to track down where this originated, and it all kept coming back to one game. Now can you guess what best-selling game most likely kicked off this trend? Yep, Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 4 takes place in a village, and the color scheme was used in certain ways to create the atmosphere they wanted, but the question still remains as to why brown? And more so, why did so many games become influenced by this color palette? So first, let's look into the color psychology of brown, because that's where this gets a little confusing. So brown has always been associated with things like comfort, security, strength, nature, being dependable. On the other hand, it's also probably everyone's least favorite color and is associated with things like dirt and dullness, even though that's entirely contextual. Now, in some games, this color palette totally makes sense. For example, in a game like Rule of Rose, it gives you that feeling of going back in time, like looking at an old photo. Using brown as an establishing color, you feel both the warmth of the tones, but you also keep the creepy factor of where the hell am I, and that's cool. This also goes for Silent Hill Homecoming, which actually switches between gray and brown depending on which world you're in, but washes out all the color either way. Then you have some selective uses of it. In Tomb Raider Anniversary, for example, where some of the Egypt levels have a warm brown filter over everything, and that works really great. It makes you feel the heat of the hot desert sand and gives you the whole Indiana Jones vibe, which is perfect, even if it is a bit overdone in some places. But then you have a game like Dead Space that is happy to slather the game in washed out hues of brown, even though it's set in a sci-fi environment. A setting like this should be all about space tech and very clean surfaces, much like real life space stations. In my opinion, this is a great example of how not to use the brown palette, and unsurprisingly, they didn't stick with it for the sequels. More unnecessary uses of this palette are seen in Grand Theft Auto 4, which turned New York into a very muddy looking city. Like look at Grand Theft Auto 5 in comparison, and you can really see that it is just a bit too brown for no particular reason. So why am I making this video? Well, it all stems from Resident Evil. Shocker. I actually do really genuinely love talking about color, but this is not a color channel, this is a gaming channel, so I'm gonna shut up and get back to it. Now I've had this conversation with friends before, but Resident Evil 2 showed that you can have a vast amount of colors and still retain the atmosphere you want to convey to the player, regardless of genre. Resident Evil 2 actually had a great color scheme, consisting mainly of primary colors and a splash of green. When you see Claire and Leon next to each other, the red and blue of their clothing not only stands out from the environment, but also creates a clear contrast between them while also being complementary colors. This also applies to Claire and Sherry, and Leon and Ada. The green I mentioned is presented in different areas of the game, like the club key door, Mr. X, various areas of the RPD, and in the sewers. Then compare this to Resident Evil 4. Leon, the environment, the enemies, and even some characters like Lewis are all brown. And if they aren't brown, they wash out whatever colors are there to make them brown-ish. What actually first made me realize they did this to the color palette was when I saw a lot of the Resident Evil 4 mods where the modded textures seemed super saturated and were distracting, and the reason for that was they didn't brownify the colors. Even Ada's dress, which is not red, Krauser, it's actually a shade of burgundy, and has a brown wash over the color. 
And if you think Leon's hair is blonde, well, guess again. By using a color picker and isolating his hair, you can really see that it's quite brown. Ashley is blonde though, which you can see by comparing her hair color side by side with his. But none of that actually matters, so let's move on. Fast forward to today, and the trend of brown color palettes seems to be safely behind us, but I guarantee it'll come back at some point. But I really hope it doesn't. I hope some of you guys found this interesting. Uh, I really do love talking about color, but I'm more interested to hear what you guys have to say. Did you like the brown phase? Did you hate the brown phase? Did you even notice the brown phase? Uh, let me know in the comments. And if there's any color and gaming related topics you think I should talk about, please let me know because I would be very happy to cover that in a video. Thank you for watching this video and allowing me to nerd out about color, but that is it for today. Until next time, I'm Kai Morgan, and as always, thanks for watching Ink Ribbon. And a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Your extra support means the world to me and helps me keep making content for you guys.